Alright, welcome to the first ever, um, playing Mar- <laughs> Beautiful way to start. That's, nice. that's me. This Very is good, like, Tim. I should be Luigi. I think maybe, you know, like if you host the game next time, it'll let you be Mario. But I should be Luigi because I am by far the, the worst player among the two of us. Why does that necessitate using Luigi? Luigi is bad. That's just, it's common oh, I, lore. I didn't know that was known. Yeah, that's a thing. It's a um, thing. Yeah. Uh, so, this is the first ever... Um, Playing uh, Mario while talking about yeah. pressing theological issues between a <laughs> yeah. Christian and an atheist. Pretty much. I, I'm thinking about calling it Holy Mario, but I'm not sure if that's... Uh, I don't want it to sound like we just were two Christians who talk about how much we love Jesus all the time because oh we play the, Mario yeah I won't have as big of an audience no because <laughs> the thing of this is uh, that we disagree about religion I'm an atheist he's a Christian um and he's kind but he of used to be an atheist I yeah an atheist and I used for a good and, long time and, and I used to be a Christian so we balance each other out well. But you're also sort of a more kind of moderate liberal Christian, so I think someday we could have like a a round what? robin. Oh, is it fair to call me a, a liberal? Well, you're not like evangelical hey, Christian. You're like, you know, I go to an evangelical church. You believe in I, evolution, I, right? I do believe in evolution. What, I, I, what do you think I about gays? Like, <laughs> I, I I love the gays. Exactly. You know, you're I, a liberal. I, I, That's as far as Christianity is concerned, you are liberal. Well, so. let me just say that I don't think that God particularly approves of, you know, a homosexual lifestyle, and I'm not, like, part of the gay affirming, like, well, what do like you my think pastor about gay wouldn't rights? gay marry someone, yeah, okay. you know, I'm not, like, an Episcopalian or something. Right. Um, uh, do you think that it, they should be allowed to marry under, like, U.S. legal yeah, code? Yeah, sure. Yeah. But, then that's... Like, my, my politics are super conservative, uh, so I don't think the government should have gotten the marriage business at all. Like right. I, like I but see, like... isn't it funny how, like, when you say conservative, I assume you mean by that small government, but the conservatives are the ones who want to stop uh, gay marriage, so, like, because of their religious beliefs. So, like, yeah, there, there are different varieties like... of conservative, like, you know, fiscal conservative. And Are you kind of more libertarian? That's kind of a small yeah, government thing. Yeah, that, that's... I, I guess that's fair. Like, uh, yeah. you know, if, if I could have... I like have, libertarians. <laughs> yeah, if I could have, like, elected a Ron Paul, I, I would have done that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, uh, like, I don't I don't have any any problem with, you know, gay civil marriage. Right. If, I mean, if the government's going to be in, in the marriage business at all, and they're going to give tax benefits to, you know, any couples, they, they should probably give tax benefits to all couples, and... It, Right. It should probably matter much to the government whether yeah, you know, it's having sex the, or not. The government shouldn't be dictating one particular religion's morality. Well, I just I, I would prefer a government that's small enough to drown in a bathtub. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. So that, that's kind of where I'm at. But you know, if, if they went and like started to force my church people to to marry some gays. Yeah, I mean, see, that's that's I'm pretty ridiculous. That. I don't think anybody is, like, I don't want to say anybody. There are probably some, you know, super liberal, like, um, hardcore, like, sort of what you might call enforced equal equality kind of people that, right. uh, um, you know, the, the whole, like, Oregon bakery thing is is one situation because it's a public you know it's a business so like there are reasons that businesses need to apply equally to everybody that are different from a church situation you know like uh, i guess i i don't know i feel like if i own a bakery and i don't want to make a cake for you i should be able to say i, I don't want to make a cake for you for whatever reason it's, it's my bakery yeah, and that's I, I i agree that that's a valid um perspective to an extent but that is not the law like right i mean i guess you could say well you know we could get you know whites only lunch counters right. again and i think that's why the law was first put in place because you know like like people you know minorities or those kinds of groups were just didn't have any place to eat because um you know if you don't if you say 
any uh, business can withhold service to whoever they feel like, then everybody could do that in certain parts of the country. It um, could. And that's... I, you know, I don't know if I have a problem with that like, theory. Like, if a guy well, wants to have a whites-only lunch counter, while I find that to be abhorrent, <laughs> yeah, you know, you he should probably have that. that right, in my, in no, my I, I, opinion. Because it's like... Um... First of all, it's it's problematic for you to say that because you would never have to deal with it. You know, it's like. It's... Oh, fair enough. I'm a guy with cerebral palsy, so if right. a guy wanted to have a sign that said "No cripples here," yeah, that's... you know, I would go to a different place. Or if there was no place, you know, maybe I would start a cripples only fucking right. lunch counter over here. Yeah. Sorry, oh, I shouldn't hey, swear. <laughs> maybe for our purposes of our podcast. Probably try uh, not to. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, censor. Cen oh, gee, what? That was weird. A little censor. Yeah. Cen censure. Um, but uh, you know, try to try to attract. I'll try to tone it down. I, I've I've been a sales guy my whole life, so I'm a little salty. Uh, yeah, and that's know. that's the other thing in terms of you being a liberal Christian. Like Christians don't swear. To... <laughs> no, that's not like they're they're definitely like super conservative redneck Christians who can swear up a blue streak, but. Um, right. different, you know, certain flavors of Christianity will be like it's not godly. To, they, there are certain the flavors service. of Christianity that would hear me drop an F-bomb there and be like, well, that man's not saved. Exactly, yeah. Uh, you know, clearly, not. and, you know, I, I hope that they are not correct. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, not, that's not my reading of, of the, the gospel. Oh, jeez. The, the, um, lagging threw off my tongue here. Sure it did. Ah. Ah. Now I'm gonna be smart. <laughs> yeah, there it goes. Well, at least you got better than 100. That's 800 is the highest score I've seen you get on the flagpole. You've only seen me twice. Well, didn't you get 100 twice? No. Was that me? Th this was the second time. All right. <laughs> we'll have a video record of all these now. We can go back and. Uh, oh. Right. <laughs> I got the thing. Bullshit. Yeah. Oh man. I'm I'm using the two finger method so that I can hold down speed and jump at the same time. But sometimes it's not treating me really well. <sighs> okay. So we're in good shape now. Do you like you ever you know I I mean I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure like what the the cultural sort of um, acceptance level is but we are um, we don't live in the same area so we're using an emulator so we can do net play but you know I do have like access to a, a real legitimate copy of Mario if you're worried about <laughs> the legal issues here um, I also have a real legitimate copy of Mario, so I think that we'll be pretty well covered. Where'd the thing go? Yeah. So, um, you know, but... Ah. Ooh, missed it. It was the one that you missed. Yeah, of course it was. Why wouldn't it be? Right. Um, but, uh, so we are using an emulator, and so we're, we're playing over the... Ah. Playing over the internet. Ah. <laughs> I, I suddenly lost... All Your power muscle speech. memory of which button was which. Um, but, uh. That's better than losing your powers of speech, which yeah. could be a stroke. Yeah. Very true. Um. <laughs> but, uh. Okay, good. Um, so. We are using an emulator, but I am. Using a USB NES controller, an NES, you know, facsimile, authentic, exactly like the real deal kind of thing. So, which is super cool because I'm just using a. Watch. Bam! That's what I can do. Hey, that's what we're talking about. Got the 5,000. And going. the fireworks. And the fireworks. That's I forget how right. the fireworks work because they depend on the. The number that's left on the, the timer? The, yeah, the last number of the timer. Oh, man. See how I almost slid off the edge there? Um, alright, so... We've established that you are... Oh. <laughs> we've established that you are a liberal Christian. Um, and so... What I was saying I that suppose, brought that I, up... I still feel like there's a spectrum of that. I'm kind oh, of yeah, yeah. And, uh... And, uh 
you know, that's maybe the only one that really puts him outside of, of uh, you know, gosh. I, I think most of his positions are pretty conservative uh, compared to, like, say, Reddit, where, you know, uh, most of the people on the Christianity sub are, you know, the gay affirming, you know, let's marry them all. And, uh, you know, there's absolutely no problem with <laughs> you know, that lifestyle sort of thing. Whereas I feel like there's, you know, a fundamental flaw in in that lifestyle. That doesn't mean that it's like, you know, the unforgivable sin. Yeah. But it does mean like, gosh, we should really be careful what we're affirming. Well, um, first of all, before I reply to that, I, I need to make a technical note that um, this is... Did things just speed up? I had like some major <laughs> slowdown a minute ago. And it seems like it's catching up. Um, so, a technical note, I, um, this is very much a prototypical sort of experiment in doing this type of thing. So, I'm using just a free, um, capture program. Ah, every time. Which has a 10 minute limit. And, uh, <laughs> And we just exceeded that limit, so in uh, in the um, what viewers will be seeing and what will forever be committed to posterity, there will be a gap in the part where you were talking about C.S. Lewis because the capture expired and I had to start it up again. Um, so, you know, we'll be watching for that in the future to try to... Um, stop it and restart it before it ends. <laughs> um, so, I think, you know, on the one hand, as a Christian, it's kind of like, ah, I can never make that work. You almost, like, have to believe that um, a gay lifestyle is bad, because otherwise, why would God say not to do it? You know, like, there's sort of a a necessity for you to... Well, I mean, we can dispense with certain things in the Old Testament, but, you know, the issue, I think, for a Christian who's committed to the text is that Paul talks quite a bit about it. Well, and there are, it's... you know, it's... I, I don't know if... It, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's necessarily widely accepted. I'm sure that there are plenty of people who would say that, um, you know, liberal people are just reading this into it because they want gay things to be okay, but there are definitely people who question the translations of what Paul says. You know, some say that he's only talking about male shrine prostitutes, and the problem is that they're shrine prostitutes, not that they're, you know, homosexuals, but um, there is some question about that, but... And if that's the case, that'd be great. Like, I would love that, if, if that was you know, the actual truth. But it's, it's, you know, I haven't looked into it myself. Yeah. I just don't feel like it it's, is. I don't think it's something that you're ever really going to be able to find, you know, like, absolute certainty, which... Oh, jeez, why is this happening? I can't get it to not, like, slide, you know? It's, um... Right? I and no I feel control. blessed not to have been born gay, right? Because that would have <laughs> been a pretty hard burden. Yeah, I mean, you know, and then you have to fight with this thing, but right. you well, know, I honestly, not. I feel like. Well, you, I mean, you don't have to fight it. You only have to fight it if you're convinced that it's a sin. Which, to, I have a, a big problem with the idea that the way somebody is born is automatically a sin. Like that's, you know, having been born with serious congenital problems, I have less problems with thinking that people are born in ways that they shouldn't be born. Right, I, but you know, shouldn't be born and sinful is like, you know. It's a sin. It's but not like, my sin. You know, it's maybe Satan's sin. <laughs> whoever bound well, me with this thing, you know. Yeah. But that, uh, yeah. it's still like we're, we're well. We it's it's God's sin for it. letting him then, because you know, know if you read the story of Job, like Satan has to ask God permission before he does stuff like that. That's true, and it must all be for God's glory. And I, I feel like you know, people who are born with a same-sex attraction or you know, an attraction to children or, you know, something like that, have a have a pretty hard road. And, you know, maybe they're called to a life of celibacy, which is, uh, you know, apparently what we're all supposed to be shooting for, yep. uh, you know, if we can. And, uh, you know, that's that's not, you know, that's not something I've been called to, but yeah. gosh. And, you know, you could, you could sit in church a long time 
before you realize that the Bible says, uh, you know, that it's better to be celibate than it is to be married right. and that kind of thing. Like, yeah, you can go to a lot of especially evangelical churches and have all kinds of marriage retreats and sermons about marriage. And, you know, marriage is great and all. But yeah, you're hardly ever going to get a, a sermon that talks about, hey, you know, it, it actually says in this book here that it's better not to be married, you yeah. know, because then you can focus on the Lord. You're not right. going to get that. You're going to get 50 sermons about like finding your mate and praying for your kids' spouses and like doing all that stuff. But you never hear a sermon where it's preached, hey, you know, I had these, you know, this baby girl and I, I, I prayed for her to be celibate her whole life and only focus on the Lord. Like that's something that you're not going to get outside of the Middle Ages, maybe. Yeah, I think it's a, a good point, you know, that Paul or whoever wrote that particular book because oh come on um paul uh which book was that was that in corinthians Corinthians, i think it is yeah yeah that probably would have been paul but uh you're up do you uh oh i did not sorry um you know he does romans actually we're talking about uh talking about homosexuality here we talked about no, how the, the part single. yeah where he says it's better to be single if if you're already married when you came to christ then stay married but if not then you know it might be better to be single because you can commit your life to the lord that's what he says and yet what we need to remember when he's saying that he believed that the second coming was going yeah, to happen in his lifetime so right, that affects his you know, belief that it's better to just stay single. Because there's another verse in one of those epistles where he says, you know, it's better to get married early than to burn with lust. Right. Um, so those are definitely, like, you know, the, the reason he's saying it's better to be single is because he thinks, you know, Jesus is going to come back before people have time to burn with lust. It's an interesting... Um, feature of Christianity that practically every generation of them is thought that they were the last yeah. generation. It is a... Uh, oh. um, it's, you know, some would say problematic, but... Uh, I cause that's problematic. You know, because think... like, you, you don't need to think it's it's a problematic for literalists because um the the bible you know people who are supposedly writing inerrant there are a lot of problems for literalists and that's why i'm not a literalist it it doesn't work very well i know Uh, but then the problem for non-literalists is you know if you're not taking it all literally then how do you know what you should take literally well, I think the church answer is that we have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And, right, uh, but then, you know, you know, wrapping it back to the the homosexuality issue, um, if a, a homosexual Christian believes that they have the guidance of the, homo- the Holy Spirit, that it's okay to be homosexual, then how can you respond to that? How can you say, no, it's not? My response not? would be, you know... The... When I read the text, it seems pretty clear. I mean, unless you're going to get into, you know, pretty deep dissection of the Greek and and try to, you know, make the case that it's only temple worship, which I've, again, I, I want to stress that I would really love that if that was the case. And, you know, it was only temple prostitution that we're talking about. And, of course, Christians shouldn't be visiting temple prostitutes right. of, of, you know, having pagan orgies and sure. that kind of thing. But it just seems like, I don't know, he talks about even the women have given up the natural use, and yeah, I don't know, it, seems, it seems pretty... It seems well, like everyone who's tried to make that case is sort of reaching. Does that make any sense? Well, I think... Um, I, I think it's hard to separate how... Um, you know, it can seem like reaching because this is just the way it's always been as far as we're used to you know it's like it can seem like reaching just because something is commonly understand and it, this is the way everybody seems to understand it not necessarily because there's any evidence for that understanding you know that can also be the case um i suppose it's possible but yeah. it seems like an awfully mean trick uh for, <laughs> for god to pull on people and yeah just, oh i know it doesn't it doesn't seem like that would be... But that's the thing, is, like, the mean trick is that the, the you know, testament, 
the the revealed word of God is written in a language that none of us speak. Um, you know that unless you're a KGV onlyist, there's not um, a directly inspired word of God in English. Or you know, I guess if you're a Mormon, that's also um, jeez, really. Mother cannibals. But like, at least they believe that there is revelation that God did directly in English, and that's, you know, better than... Yeah, it's a shame that the Indians aren't related to the Jews in any way. They have, like, a serious DNA problem. Also, like, a serious archaeology problem, since there's <laughs> cities in America that we should be able to find evidence of that we don't have oh, evidence yeah. of. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty big one. Also, the the parts that are yeah i mean there's know, there's a lifted straight from the king james version uh you know that's that's gonna be problematic slightly uh it, it, you know there's a lot of reasons i'm not a mormon sure uh, the, the the biggest the, the biggest amount of sleep that i lose over the mormons is that they're so nice yeah they seem to be they seem to be great in so many other ways that right. it's hard for me to be like oh, yeah you and know. that's that's a very good um case in point that a transformed le life doesn't indicate that your beliefs are true right uh yeah you know and i hope that there's enough grace for for you know mormons to count at the end of the well, day i i get a lot of uh, i get a lot of flack sometimes from certain more conservative uh christian friends who uh, especially during like the the romney election cycle when i was like yeah. you know we probably get behind this guy and they're like, well, you know, he's not, he's not really Christian. And I was like, well, that's not really for us to say. You know, we don't yeah. have to be Mormons, but at least he's like, you know, talking about Jesus, <laughs> even if he does think that he's sort of the, you know, uh, yeah, of Satan, I mean, it's... the Archangel Michael or whatever they think. Uh, wait, no, maybe that's just Jehovah's Witnesses that think he's the Archangel Michael. But uh, you know, it's it, it's tough sometimes to have sort of interfaith dialogue. Uh, because we're coming at it from such different places. Uh, yeah, so, like, you would say that the Mormons don't have the Holy Spirit in them, right? I don't know. I, I would say that I wouldn't want to be Joseph Smith on Judgment Day. Oh, uh, well, Joseph know, like, Smith. I'll, I mean, Joseph Smith was a con man. Like, that's... He was but definitely I mean, like, con the, man. the rank and having file been, Mormons. Having been a bit of a grifter, uh, you know, in another life, I can recognize the signs. Uh, you, you know, but so I wouldn't want to be Joseph Smith on Judgment Day, but I'm not going to go ahead and condemn like every Mormon everywhere to, you know, hellfire because it's just not my place. I, I, I'm not a Mormon because I have problems with theology and I, I have problems with their, you know, like I said, they have an archaeology problem, they have a DNA problem. You can chase it, maybe. Uh, if they didn't have, if like if they did some DNA tests and they're like, hey, you know what, American Indians are. Uh, you know, a, a Semitic subtype, and they are related to Jews. Uh, you know, I would I would be a Mormon in a heartbeat. They were like, hey, you know, we found this buried city, and we yeah. found some iron breastplates, and you know, stuff like that in America. Uh, you know, look at this stuff. That would be cool. Yeah, you know, but I don't think that uh, uh, it would be neat to have seven levels of heaven and. <laughs> You know, have like a super Commander secret American universe. Christianity that, that, you know, temple rituals and all that pageantry and, you know, they really help each other and the pastors don't get paid. None of those, none of their clergy gets paid. That's super cool <laughs> to me, uh, you know, uh, uh, but all that, all that aside, you know, I don't think that they have the fullness of the gospel. Sure. And I think that they, that the leadership is in serious danger of perdition. And, uh, you know, plus they seem to be very secretive as a church and have, uh, you know, actively <laughs> intimidated and suppressed people in recent times. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, like, it is a problem, though. <sighs> um, if, like, this is one of those areas where I feel like, you know, it presents a lo logical conflict or an internal consistency conflict, either way, um, which to me speaks to the whole thing not being very rational, that if, um, if the Mormons do have the Holy Spirit, then you need to ask, why isn't the Holy Spirit telling them that being Mormon is wrong? And if they don't have the Holy Spirit, then you gotta wonder, like, why does, why do these people who 
really do sincerely seem to be pursuing Jesus, not have the Holy Spirit. So I guess if the short version is because they don't have a, a clear vision of who Jesus is. Right, but like, isn't that what the Holy have... Spirit's supposed to provide? I don't know. I, you know, the Holy Spirit is sort of a mystery, and I. Oh. <laughs> Really close. Yeah. I'm not sure, you know, if the Holy Spirit's job is to protect us from sort of doctrinal error. Uh, but isn't you know, that like... Dang it. Very... Yeah, I, I, I think it was a lag issue again. <laughs> Could have been. Um, I can't get off a one, two, so I don't feel Yeah. Wow, I'm actually doing better than you. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, but, uh, uh, oh boy, that was very close. Yeah, but this like, is a lot of... what's that verse? There. Oh dear. There's a um, there's a verse that says like when Jesus is talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit, he says, you know, I'll give you the word of truth. Uh, he said something about, like, so that you won't be confused or something like that. Like, there's something about, like, the Holy Spirit is there for the sake of, um... Well, isn't the larger context of that, that there's really sad that he's going away again, and he's like, no, listen, guys, this is going to be a good thing. You know, I'm, all power and authority has been given to me, and I'm going back to my Father, and I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you, right? and, you know, you're going to have power, and it's going to be awesome. Because they, they're sort of, like, you almost got to feel bad for the disciples... Because their their expectations are are always being readjusted, uh, you know, like they they think that you know he's going to come and be a king like David, and then he's not, and then you know he comes back and they're like, oh, you know, the vengeance is going to happen now, yeah. uh, you know, of course, and then it doesn't, mm -hmm. and then you know Paul thinks that the you know the end's coming any minute, and then it's not, and it's just you know it's tough, and even Jesus seemed to think like. Uh, you know, it's going to be soon, maybe. And it's, you know, I, it's it's tough. It's tough yeah. being a follow sometimes. We don't have all the information. Oh, and, uh, you know, we're just doing the best we can to bring the gospel to everybody. I think if the Christians didn't think the world was going to end all the time, we probably wouldn't work as hard. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, well, that's, that's uh, sort of my take on, on the uh, On the flip side of that, you have this case in Texas it's gone to the Supreme Court now of parents who they took their kids out of public school and like they were ostensibly homeschooling them but but really uh, not well they were not teaching them anything because they're just gonna yeah, get raptured yeah. anyway yeah and like now it's to the Supreme Court about whether they have the religious right to not educate their children because they believe the rapture is going to happen. And I that's... As a libertarian, people probably do have that right. Well, but... I mean, what right do the children have? Because, like, apparently one of the children actually ran away from home and went to school. Really? <laughs> like, yeah. So, oh like, do goodness. the children have the right to be educated? Like, do the parents have the right to ruin their kids' Keep futures? Them in the dark. I, well, I not just know. keep them in the dark, but, like, you know, having an education affects your livelihood later in life. You know, how well you can get a job and stuff like that. So, do the parents have the right to hurt their kids that way? Um, and, you know, like, the parents can have the right to, you know, do act themselves in a certain way because they believe... Um, do you want to, since we're... Both We're game over. over. Do probably, you want to? We probably should stop, but we can yeah. finish this. Yeah, yeah. Hard, um, I guess. So we'll just let the demo run while we're finishing up. I guess. I guess, in my opinion, like if I was the emperor, mm -hmm. no, I'd say that maybe parents do have the right to educate their children the way they see fit. Right, but like, only because not we're not told to of... not educate them, as the case may yeah, be. That's... Only because I would hate to see the government to try to step in, and and mandate. Mandate you know, being taught, standards but like for, for that's school. almost like, like you could say a kind of child abuse problem. That if parents are doing things which directly affect how well a child can get on in life when they're older, isn't that a sort of abuse? Well, it. I guess it depends on the spirit in which it's done. Like if the if the parent is mm, doing that, I don't know if it does. Like, religious conviction. I I don't think motivation. Be a misguided one. 
you know, they don't intend to do harm to their to their child. They just I, see it. They I, see I don't it wrong. think that like, matters. It's like the, the JWs that don't let their kids get their blood transfusions, you know, like they should probably have that right, even though that's horrible. Yeah, but that's and the I've... thing is like, no, the, if the, if they're doing like, you know, Christian scientists, for instance, the, you know, mm-hmm. just pray, pray away. Um, this isn't and, real because nothing yeah, like, real. That can lead to their child dying. Like, it's not just a quality of life issue. It's whether they're alive at all. Um, So that's fine. But I still say don't touch it. Uh, yeah, that's you know don't don't like the yeah. you have to have the right to practice your religion. No, you, have you don't. Have... Mm. I mean, what if somebody's religion involves human sacrifice? Should they have the right to practice that? Well, clearly, that there's already laws against murder. Right, you know, but so there's laws against ch- children not getting an education too. But not so, in the context of a parochial school. Right, like but, a home school counts as a parochial school. And but, if they want to have a one kid parochial school in a house. But what we're government... talking about is whether people should have the religious right to break the law. Well, no. I think we have two laws in conflict. We have a law that says that, you know, we can have a private religious school, even if it's a private religious school but of don't, one kid. But don't those in a house. still have education standards? No. At least not where I live. Uh, like I, I, <laughs> well, I, I should talk. I, I was homeschooled for most of my, um, like fourth through tenth grade, and I, like, Did you I, learn? I mean, yeah, I, I got, I, I mean, I was already pretty smart anyway, so I didn't have to try as hard. But like, I definitely remember some years where my brother and I both just, um, you know, said, uh, like, not like said, like made a official decision but like halfway through the year we're just kind of like eh don't feel like doing school anymore and like you know there just wasn't enough um i I guess our parents just weren't on top of it enough to stop guys they just kind of look up one day and realize that we haven't done any school in a month you know and it's like so what's the i'm like "Eh, i feel like i've learned enough for this (laughs) you know it's like there's there's not really any you know, standardized testing or anything. So I guess you're probably right about that. But at the same time, like, I, I, I still say if that leads to a situation where the child is not able to get along in life later on, then that is, that is a, a great type evil. of evil. I'm not saying it's not an evil. I'm saying it's a greater evil to have the government a- able to come in and mandate to a religious community uh, the, the manner in which it should educate its kids. Okay. Now, some kids well, are going to well, suffer. Let you me know, ask but you this then. If if sure. they're not doing it for religious reasons, if parents pull their kids out of public school and homeschool them, and just don't teach them anything because they just don't feel like it, but it has nothing to do with religion, is that okay? I would say that that's closer to criminal because, like you said, there are rules that say that right. the children have to be educated. So and- why why does it become okay for religion? I think that that's probably because, something uh, we should save for at next least time. in America. Uh, Religious you know, the, freedom, right? But the thing is, like, to what, to what rights trumps? To what extent other... does religions do religions have the right to harm other people? That's that's I think a question we should save for next time and let that be kind of the cliffhanger because we're running short on time now. Yeah, that's fair enough. We'll we'll because I, I think there's probably a whole hour we could do yeah, on that. Yeah, definitely. And, definitely. And, uh, Kim Davis. Yeah, so it's going to be good. This is fun. Yeah, all right. And we'll, we'll and play we, some more Mario. We totally tomorrow. sucked up Mario, but we had a good conversation. That's kind we of did. the way this is going to go. This is the way it's going to be. So we yeah. can we can play some more Mario or maybe try some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Tim. All right, man. Good Sounds stuff. good. Bye. Bye-bye.